Now, Real Madrid smashed the world record transfer fee when they signed Gareth Bale earlier this week. And for those who feel frustrated their clubs haven't got that sort of cash, they may be more disappointed to learn that they helped Real pay for the Welsh winger. How is this possible? David Bick from Square One Consulting joins us from our studio at the Gherkin in the city of London. Thanks for joining us, Dave. Uh, let's start with, OK, so how come, when I have a little look at my paycheck, all that money has been taken out, how come I am funding Real Madrid and their move for Gareth Bale? How does this work? Good morning, Rob. I mean, the headline point on this is it is absolutely scandalous. Um, keep in mind that Bankia is a, a, a contrived collection of seven Spanish banks that have effectively went bust uh, about three years ago. They were bailed out to the tune of over 20 billion euros and last year alone made losses of 20 billion euros. Now, if you and I went to, to Bankia with a business proposition to borrow 86 million, effectively 86 million pounds, the likelihood is, Rob, they'd turn around to us and say, we're not prepared to take that risk. So why can they be permitted to risk £86 million of what is effectively taxpayers' money on one football player who may or may not work out to be a success financially for the club? Now, if Real Madrid can't afford to pay for a player like that properly on a, on a proper economic, prudent basis, they shouldn't be doing it. And the bank should not be lending this sort of money for this sort of asset. So Bankier are the club that lent the money to Real Madrid. So, explain the chain for us, David. How does my money that I pay in taxes end up in Madrid? How does that work? Well, when, when the banks, this, this collection of seven banks, Rob, went, went bust, the government, like they did here with, with RBS and Lloyds, they stepped in and effectively used taxpayers' money to keep the, these banks afloat. They put it in one big pool, which they now call Bankia and taxpayers' money kept that bank afloat. Now, those same Spanish taxpayers in the main, but obviously also us as well because the, the bailout money came through Europe, uh, are the same people who've been led, uh, in a sense, up the garden path, and many of them in the lurch, because of the behaviour of the banks during the financial crisis. So to now see one of those banks um, being prepared to lend this money to a club that's already very heavily in debt is, as I said earlier, I think absolutely scandalous. OK, two things uh, I'd just like to investigate there. We see today Real Madrid posting record revenue of more than half a billion euros. However, there's still this huge debt that they've got. Just explain to the layman like me how they can bring in so much money yet still owe so much money. Well, uh, let's say compare it to Manchester United and the controversy that there, there has been over the debt that has sat there. Uh, the point about debt is they charge interest on it. The larger the debt, the more interest you're going to have to pay. That means you've got less money uh, you know, to sit, discharge your other costs like paying for employees. There, there, there's a point at which it doesn't make sense to borrow any more money. Now, with Real Madrid in debt to the tune of about 500 million, does it really make any sense to add on another 100 million euros, which is, in, a, in effect, what, the, what they paid for bail? I don't think it does. So, why did it happen? Is it simply because of Real Madrid's long history, its place in Spanish society, and the fact that it has always had the institution supporting it? Is that the reason? I think you pretty much hit the nail on, on the head there, Rob. It's, it's, you know, some people argue it's almost an arm of the Spanish state. I mean, if Valencia or Espanyol or Atletico Madrid went to borrow this sort of money on top of uh, already heavy debts, they'd obviously be told, no, it's not possible. Is there a... So the real issue here is, is Real Madrid being allowed to distort the competition. And, and, and from the way I see it, they most definitely are. We know full well, it's been well documented, the plight of the 18 other clubs in La Liga are in financial mess. Valencia, who were the last ones to really challenge, weren't they? Real Madrid and Barcelona, as far as supremacy in La Liga over a sustained period are in big financial trouble. Is there a real fear that the big two, one of the big two, could go under in Spain, Real Madrid or Barcelona? 
I don't, I don't think so, Rob, because at the end of the day, there's always going to be somebody who's going to step up to the plate to, to fund it. And I think in Real Madrid's case, you know, even the government. I mean, in effect, Valencia is owned by the regional government uh, of the Valencia region. So I don't think there is a real danger of that. But I, the, the other side of that coin is what strictures are going to be put in place to, to stop clubs behaving irresponsibly? Now, I think financial fair play will go some of the way, but, you know, this is going to get interesting over the next couple of years because is, is Platini and UEFA going to hold people like Real Madrid to account if they breach the rules? If they oh. keep spending money like this, I would have thought it's almost inevitable that they'll breach the rules. So you cannot see how it fits into financial fair play across the whole of Europe, then? Well, the, 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 the assessment, Rob, is going to be over a three-year period. So if... If this becomes the last time that Real Madrid spend this sort of money on one player, then, then, then perhaps they'll get inside the rules. I mean, the test will be whether or, not, whether or not they do get inside the rules, and the bigger test will be that if they don't, what will UEFA actually do about it? That would be fascinating. What, finally, David, if this was an English club operating in the way that Real Madrid have done and taken out such a huge loan, would they still be in business? Well, my immediate thought is that if the state-owned banks here, namely RBS and, and Lloyds, were looking at, uh, were being asked to lend £86 million for one player, my guess is they'll say no because they just won't want the political fallout from doing that. David Big, fascinating. Thank you very much indeed. Pleasure, Rob.